Okay, YouTube. Uh, today uh, we're going to show a few of the BIOS settings on a Gigabit X58 chipset, UD3R motherboard. This is the i7-950 CPU. Uh, it's currently set in the base. We're going to uh, overclock it. I've already done it successfully, so I know kind of what the settings have to be, so it'll boot up for us. At least that's the plan. Um, we're going to go to 4.2 gigahertz. There is software with the motherboard that will take us from the base clock of, which I'll show you, I'll get in here. Wrong screen. Here we go. So you've got your uh, the base clock or the advanced core features. Um, you've got the right here showing the clock ratio, which this will actually clock up to 24. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that to 24. Then we're going to come down here the the QPI clock ratio and the uncore clock ratio. Number one thing to remember about that is that the QPI clock ratio needs to be exactly two times the uncore clock ratio. So as you're setting your different, uh, as you take this off auto, as you can see it goes 12, 13, pretty much uh, all the way up to 48. You want that to be exactly 50% of the QPI clock ratio. So we're going to have to mess with that a little bit. But what I'm going to do is come down to the base clock. This is on the X58 chipset. This is where your overclocking happens. We're going to enable it. Uh, and as I've said, I've already ran this up through 150 which gets us a 3.2 gigahertz. Um, let's try that again. 150 gets you a 3.6. 160 takes you to 3.84. 170 gets you to 4.08, which I've ran that successfully and stable. Um, we're up to 175, which has been, I'm not getting a few programs to work at 175, and the system will come up and I can run benchmarks and all that good stuff but on the chip not only is heat important but the actual when Intel produces the chip they run the the actual CPU through a instruction set every CPU has a baseline instruction set so it's got its own program on the chip um, and at some level that chip fails let's say they test this this obviously is a 3.0 chip so they ran it at 2.8 2.9 3.0 3.1 3.2, my guess is at 3.2 or 3.1, the full set of instructions would not run on this chip. Therefore, it was back clocked to where it last ran successfully, which was 3.06, and you have an i7-950 chip. Uh, a few millimeters away, there could have been a piece of that silicon that did in fact pass at 3.2, 3.4, 3.5. That might have become an 875 chip, which is unlocked and able to overclock easily. Um, or it could have passed all the way up to the 3.8 or 4.4.2 mark and become a much higher rated chip. So heat is important, but that's not the only thing that makes a chip, gives the chip the ability to overclock at higher speeds. Um, one thing to look at here, obviously, my uncore clock ratio and my QPI. I'm at 6.3, so I've got to be half of that. So I'm going to step this up, probably going to have to get up here to about 18. And 18 is in fact half of, which is 3150 megahertz, is half of 6300 megahertz. And then we're going to come down. We've got the memory right now. I don't have anything but stock fan um, cooling the actual case. I do have an H70 water cooler on the CPU. Um, but what I want to do is make this change the settings. I'm going to just leave it at, down at 1050. It is 1333 RAM, um, but I've had a few issues with it, and I don't have sensors on that memory right now so I don't want to um, get into overclocking that. Right now we just want to keep the base memory. I haven't changed any voltages. Um, so this is just a straight test to get the CPU to 4.2. So let's go ahead and do that now. And we'll restart and a little cross of the fingers and hopefully this thing boots right back for us. Um, just a quick run now. You have quote 12 gigs of RAM. It's the 8 data 1333 RAM. I have a Agility 2 256 gig SSD. Uh, you obviously know what the chip is, you know what the board is. Um, it's a NVIDIA GTX 580 uh, graphics card and the only obviously change from a stock 912 HAF Coolmaster case is the fact I put the Corsair 870 water cooler on the chip which is a very easy install, fits in the case fine. 
I'm in the process of uh, getting a few slower. Stock fans do the job, but they're a little loud, as you can probably hear. So I'm going to change down to some uh, kind of dampen the sound with some slower fans that actually put out some pretty decent uh, CFM. Um, so here we are. We're up to the login. And as you're aware of on maybe your system or another system, this can take, from the time you type in a password, to desktop. 45 seconds, 50 seconds. I've got an i3 laptop. It's a Dell. Uh, nothing special about it, but it takes at least 30 to 45 seconds. This is about a three count near to desktop. That's the SSD at work, obviously. So what we're going to do now, just pull up and throw a uh, temperature sensor monitor. Hopefully this is uh, seen okay. As you can see, it's 36. It's going back and forth. There's no load on it. It does show the 175 block. It's at the 23 multiplier. It can go to 24. So it shows the 4025 when it's at the 23. We're going to run a quick uh, little test it has, which is going to take the chip 4200 megahertz. It's not under full load. It's 100 load. And shows your score 1627 at 8.994 seconds. Under 9 seconds on this thing is moving. Um, the high score, which is basically uploaded, is 1976 at 7.4 seconds. Obviously, somebody has an i7 940 clock at 4.8 megahertz or 4.8 gigahertz. So, uh, pretty fast system there. Uh, basically, going to go through a quick battery of tests here. Well, I say quick, it's about three or four minutes. So, uh, there's a couple things to do. I don't want my video encoder. Here we go. Okay. This is a 64-bit video test, uh, memory test, drive test, and CPU test. So it goes for a whole battery of DirectX, 3D, um, and what have you. It's called Performin Test 7 Evaluation Version. I haven't paid for it. It's a 30-day trial. Um, kind of a neat little graphic interface. You can click on each one. It shows you what you have in the system. It gives you the actual, it does pull up the proper motherboard, the X58A uh, UD3R motherboard. It shows the i7-950 at 3.07, which the current measured speed is 4026 megahertz. And then it shows my hard disk and all those good things. So let's run the benchmark. So it starts off, we're getting right into the CPU. Checks the floating point, the math integers, all those good little uh, tests you run on. And it's going to give you somewhat of a, um, an end result for your system as far as an overall score. But it also breaks it down into each individual floating point tests and all the different things you see in typical benchmarks. I don't know how well the, uh, the system can pick up the sound from the fans, but uh, got a little nifty thing on the phone here. It's a little dB meter. If I put my little dB meter next to the case, it cranks up to just shy, but you can't see it. I'll put it up here, maybe. A little dB meter on my iPhone, basically. Um, the room, when I'm talking like this, it's kicking about 81, 82. If I put the microphone of the phone, it goes well over 80 near the case. So uh, that's going to change. going to drop some higher CFM. Found a few uh, more silent. They run about 900 to 1100 RPM. Put out 70, 75 CFM, and they're under 19 decibels. Probably the, st the stock fans are 2000 RPM fans and run at considerably faster uh, speed and also quite a bit louder. So you can get ball bearing fan, a few different ball bearings, a little bit different tech. They're like 10 or 12 bucks a piece. I'm going to drop 50 bucks on five of them, and hopefully it'll drop that, uh, drop that case down a bit. So it's going through the various tests right now. We're on uh, the DirectX test. Uh, this is running what would typically be kind of like a uh, multiplayer game or first person shooter. And here we go. This is actually fairly typical of what a PC game would be. You're looking at 93 point something, 94, 95 frames a second. Uh, it's a 1024 by 768, 32-bit color, and four-time multi-sampling. And it, of course, shows your video card. And jumps into um, the V-Sync off, so it's changed the vertical sync on it. So it's an unconnected V-Sync here. 
that gets down, which is fairly typical in most games. Most time you won't run V-Sync, which actually sometimes can limit. In World of Warcraft, I believe it'll limit your uh, frame rate, at least the reporting, to 60 frames a second. Uh, so this is more of a direct 3D. It was showing about 70 or 72. Uh, jumping into the memory, the reads and writes on the memory. As you notice, we've got one core up around 50, 54. Want to run some of that? Um, temperature's been pretty good on the on the cooler on the stock fan from Intel that came in the box with the 950. Uh, first off, I would never go to 4.2 on that stock cooler. There are some air coolers out there that I know will run to that speed. Um, I just found this on sale. I think it was $79 on a Black Friday deal for the H70. That's basically the the larger radiator from the H50. It's like double the thickness little bit larger overall with two fans, one on the front, one on the back. So you can set a push-pull configuration, get the air moving through there. And then, of course, the uh, CPU has a smaller, uh, the pump, and then the two, two, wire, two pipes, I guess. So it's about to finish up, and it's going to hit a CD test, which I have no CD, and I do not want to run the CD drive. So we're going to cancel that when it pops up, and then it's going to give us a baseline or an overall score. So there it is. We're going to cancel that. 2843. I actually had one like 2889 before. But either way, we're going to pull up the baseline and the current test. We're going to go full screen. So you can see the pass mark rating right over here. They're showing the baseline 950. It's 16.4% slower than this current test I just took. The CPU mark is 21.6 slower. The 2D graphics is 21.5 slower, and of course it's all graphically represented. The green line is at 4.2, the red line is your baseline on the i7, um, 950 at the 3.06. Your 3D graphics shows a, seven, essentially it shows minus 17.2 to the baseline, so that's a 17.2% increase. Uh, the memory did change 21.6, again that's based on the clock speed. And then of course your disk results should be pretty much the same, it actually shows it a bit slower on this one. No idea how that all correlates with uh, read and write speed and what that test is. So, anyways, that is a uh, quick down and dirty. Throw it at you on the UD3R X58 motherboard with the 950. Uh, the only thing aside from stock is the H7 water cooler. That rig, not counting the monitor, I've got just shy of $1,600 in. Just bought a cheap monitor until I can find a decent IPS screen. That monitor is a 25 inch, uh, it's an eye ink, which is a high pog, or I think it's a hand spray maybe. Uh, it's like 150 bucks on sale. So just got something to run it until I can uh, get that next batch of cash and get a better monitor, but uh, serves the purpose. So if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments and uh, probably show the inside of the case in a little bit more detail later. And if I get this thing beyond 4.2, we'll come back with a video.